Hiding in Plain Sight, Unmasking the Secret Combinations of the Last Days by Ken Bowers. This is a summary of that book by Nate Richardson. Throughout the book, there are citations and quotations from renowned and original sources. This document, however, is a summary of the, ma of the message of the text. My hope is that you'll get a taste of it here and then go read the whole book. This document doesn't have near the persuasive power of the book itself. Ken Bowers is an LDS author. The chapters of the book are Chapter 1, There is no conspiracy, so there. Chapter 2, The Golden Rule, Who has the gold makes the rules. Chapter 3, How firm a foundation. Chapter 4, Education. Chapter 5, Welfare. Chapter 6, All the news that's fit to print. Chapter 7, American Foreign Policy. Chapter 8, The Buck Stops Here. Chapter 9, The Round Table, The TLC, and The Builder Burgers. Chapter 10, Terrorism and 9-11. Chapter 11, The Enlightened Ones, a.k.a. The Illuminati. Chapter 12, The Committee of 300. Chapter 13, The New World Order Religion. Chapter 14, Matria, a.k.a. The Antichrist. Chapter 15, The Priesthood and the Constitution. Chapter 16, what can I do? Chapter 17, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Introduction. Heber J. Grant said, Satan is working under such perfect disguise that men do not recognize him or his methods to destroy economic, political, and religious freedom. Without, it, without knowing it, the people are being urged down paths that lead only to destruction. DNC 1036 through 37 says, You cannot always tell the wicked from the righteous. Ezra Benson said, Those who are complacent in the fight for liberty, um, going with popularity, will lament it. There is an old puppet show called Punch and Judy. No matter what the script is, eventually they end up punching each other. We'll see how things are just like this. J. Edgar Hoover said, Consp there's a conspiracy so monstrous, he cannot believe it uh, exists. The German professor explains gradual habit habituation tactics used in Germany by Hitler. Uh, it is a slow process that people don't notice until it seems to come down all at once suddenly. Ezra Benson in an ensign said, a secret combination seeks to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries, increasing its evil influence and control over America and the entire world. Bruce R. McConkie said, Gadiant and robbers fill the judgment seats in many nations, and evil power seeks to overthrow all nations and countries. Satan reigns in the hearts of men. It is the day of his power. President George Bush said, A new world order. The winds of change are with us now. Former Soviet President Gorbachev said, Get rid of old thinking and put in a new world order. Chapter 1, 2 Nephi 28-22, The devil tells people lies by whispers until they are enchained in hell. Ether 5-1, It is wisdom in God that these things should be shown unto you. This refers to secret combinations, the theme of this part of the text. Ether 8.24 says, Awake to a sense of your awful situation because of this secret combination which shall be among you. J. Edgar Hoover said, It is essential to know what you are fighting for and what you are fighting against, or you'll be unmotivated and confused. David O. McKay said, We endorse educational means to awaken people to investigate communism. Alma 37.25 says, I will bring to light all their secrets and abominations unto every nation that shall hereafter possess the land. Joseph Smith History 122 says, The preachers all united to persecute me. Ezra Benson we cannot fully live in the gospel and not be involved in the fight for freedom. Accounts of several who have left conspiring, group, conspiring groups 
report on that and write of it in this chapter. Chapter 2, The Golden Rule, Who Has the Gold Makes the Rules. James A. Madison said, Money changers use every form of abuse to get power. They maintain control over governments by controlling the money and the issuer- issuance of it. The Founding Fathers of the United States wanted free enterprise capitalism. Historical examples of socialism causing less goods produced by more workers compared to... Well, uh, an example in the text is given of how socialism causes there to have less goods produced by more workers compared to capitalism where less people can make more goods than many socialist workers, the capitalists having motivation. Socialism doesn't take into account human nature. Ezra Benson says, Free enterprise system is built on eternal principle of freedom of choice. Marky e. Peterson, in the Church News, said, The United States Constitution stands for free initiative. West Germany, once it eliminated almost all controls on wages and prices, came back from poverty to one of strongest, to become one of the strongest economies. Communist countries all experienced a shortage of goods because of wage and price controls. Freedom is wired into people. Most are willing to die for it. The super rich always think they're above others. Origin of Rothschilds and their international banking is detailed in this chapter. Hugh Nibley says, Satan will buy everything on earth and claim it all, putting a price tag on it and offering it to everyone. Information is presented in this chapter on how top bankers control governments For example, by refraining from renewing treasury bills. They choose who can obtain borrowed money. They advise government people on what's good for them, despite it being bad for the government. The Rothschilds engineered the French Revolution by manipulation, then got control over France. Again, evidence and sources are presented in more detail in the actual book. International bankers hold secret meetings. Thomas Jefferson said private banks can control inflation and then deflation, which will cause people to lose their property. Interest represents a gradual transfer of wealth from society to banks. Ways that this happens is that the fractional reserve banking system uh, allows this. Uh, People have become less rich overall. They're from... It often takes two incomes to provide for a family now. In the 1920s to the 1940s, 90% of Americans owned their homes, but today 30-year loans are common for your mortgages. Nations usually collapse when a small percentage of the population owns all the wealth. Babylon fell when 3% had all the wealth. Persia fell when 2% had all the wealth. Greece fell when 0.5% had all the wealth. Rome fell when 2,000 people had all the wealth. Today in America, less than 2% or not 90% of all the wealth. The New York Times says that the one world order can only come by a small percent of the population absorbing all the wealth. The Fed never allows itself to be audited. That is the Federal Reserve. And we'll look more into that later. They killed Representative Louis McFadden when he tried to get the Fed audited. Details on the creation of the Fed, who was involved, and what their original intent was. The Fed now control all financial transactions in the United States. President Woodrow Wilson, after he had passed the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, he said, I have unwittingly ruined my country. Um, Information on the BIS, the IMF, and the World Bank is presented. The BIS has secret meetings in Switzerland where 13 people shape the world's economy. Financial barons who control the world's supply of money. These are. These organizations give loans to places they know will not ever be able to pay. Then they destroy their economies. It's a tactic they use. In other words, massive debt leads nations into the New World Order. Socialism is forced upon indebted countries to wreck their economies. Joseph Stiglitz proposed a helpful economic move to help third world countries rather than the status quo of getting them in debt then crushing them, and he was fired by Clinton for such proposal. It is shown how the IRS and income tax money 
go toward the pockets of the bankers, not into taking care of uh, roads, schools, and public things. Uh, President Kimball said that the LDS people paying their taxes, they should, and if they don't like the taxes, go against it in the politically correct way by the due process of law. Ezra Benson said, The beginning of our troubles can be traced to the Federal Reserve manipulating money, allowing arbitrary exchange of the value of our money, uh, manipulating the money for political purposes. Ezra Benson said, It is possible that the government manipulators who uh, bring economic crisis are hoping that we will come to them begging for help, offering our civil rights in exchange. Alexander Hamilton said, Nothing is more common than for a free people in times of heat and violence to gratify moment, momentary passions by uh, letting into the government principles and predecents uh, which afterward prove fatal to themselves. Quoted in ben Ezra Benson, An enemy hath done this. Chapter 3, How Firm a Foundation the history of Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, and Carnegie, their ties to the Fed and IRS and income tax amendment is presented. These people get us to pay more tax, more taxes, but themselves are exempt from taxes. When you tax businesses, they never pay it. They merely increase their prices, so it's basically just taxing the citizens more. Prosperity doesn't come from government. It comes from industry and hard work. When China was communist, people got angry, and Tiananmen Square massacre killing thousands of Chinese happened. Now that they are free enterprise capitalism, their economy is booming. Once a country becomes economically free, allowing free market exchange capitalism, religious freedom soon follows, and loss of economic liberty brings loss of religious liberty, too. A side note exciting to think about how China should then soon have religious freedom because it's starting to get more economic freedom. Explanation of interlocking tax-exempt foundations controlling the United States is presented. The founding fathers practiced non-interventionism with government and economy. Large colleges today don't have free market economists in the staff on the staff teaching. This is part of how traditional American values are being replaced. The Ford Foundation's Foundation pays colleges so long as they can pick who the teachers are and those teachers get uncancelable contract so they can teach whatever they want. The Ford Foundation merging with the United States, merging the United States with the Soviet Union, but won't tell about it. And so the Ford Foundation is merging the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, quote of them saying this presented in the text. Rockefeller, Rockefeller's finance historians who rewrite the past in our books. Again, references to all this, all these citations of these people admitting these things is found in the text of the book. Roosevelt and Wilson doing large crimes to get the United States into World War I and World War II. Evidence presented on that. W. Cleon Skousen referring to what J. Reuben Clark said said that they're preparing another war for you, which will be just as big a mistake as World War I was. They made this, the Great Depression, last many more years than it needed to. They buy up all the stock cheap, then make billions by putting you through war. <clears throat> there was a scam, well, there is a scam story of Thomas Jefferson and a sexual affair. Those who speak against the personal life of Thomas Jefferson just happen to be the same people who are against the ideals which he taught. It's an agenda to change history for political gain. A list of the programs, very communist, founded by the Ford Foundation, are things such as when a school book which teaches true history and morals is presented, they reject it, not funding it for publication. The psychology field gets money from these foundations to promote situational ethics, atheism, and collectivism. The idea that we are not accountable for our actions because of overwhelming outside forces. 
Soviet spy named Dodd, who worked for Alger Hiss, spoke of controlling the State Department and getting the United States into war to alter the life of the entire people, that being the most effective way for such. So they want to bring war to change lifestyles. He also speaks of a letter in which they give directives telling the United States President Wilson to not let World War I end too quickly. And speaks of a need to control the United States education. All those from the Soviet spy Dodd. J. Edgar Hoover said the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. Information on the Reese Committee is presented in the text as well. Chapter 4, Education. Ben Franklin said, People who know the rights God gave them are hard to enslave, and vice versa. People who don't know the rights God gave them are easy to enslave. In 1940, the number one problem in schools was talking back to teachers. Now it's murder, assault, teen pregnancy, teachers having sex with students, etc. The United States was number one in education educational achievement for years. Now it's the 35th. The Founding Fathers wanted localized control over education, not in the hands of the federal government. Thomas Jefferson said that we should place each school under the care of those most interested in its conduct. Faraway bureauc uh, a faraway bureaucracy of a few thousand people can't make the billions of needed decisions for local schools. James Madison said, When the government takes over education of children and welfare for poor, it subverts the very foundation of this nation, throwing away the nature of the limited government it was set up for by the people of America. Thomas Jefferson, the man who said, Let's have separation of church and state, is the man who saw to it that there were Christian hymnals in all the schools and Bibles in the schools. He wanted children to have a religious education. In the early days of the United States, people preferred private education, and those students always did better. What of those who couldn't afford private education? There was enough people who would volunteer to take care of all of those. Charity schools would care for those who could not afford private school. Alex de Tocqueville said, It's very rare to find one in America not trained in the history of his country and the leading features of the Constitution and the doctrines and evidences of his religion. Boston had more private schools than public ones, and by the end of the American Revolution, many towns had no common schools at all. In other words, no, private, no public schools at all. Private schools were eligible for subsidies. There were no compulsory attendance laws for school. Yet 91.8% attended school, despite communists saying, Oh, there are so many children running around the streets. That was agenda that they used to foist public school, mandatory public school on us. Private schools save pu the public from taxes of public school. Unitarians took over Harvard in, in 1805 and kicked out the Calvinists. Socialists want socialism for others, but not for themselves, because they're egocentric like the rest of us. Humans are egocentric. The Bible teaches that, that men are wicked and need to be disciplined. That is what Calvinists did, but they were kicked out. Unitarians thought that if everyone is rich, there would be no issues in society, so they geared education systems toward merely earning money. Robert Owen, father of socialism, is consider, uh, considered children a blob of plastic which the society can shape any way it wants to be. He wanted the future man, which is now known as the Soviet man. They want communism, but we won't have it, so they are slowly bringing it to us via the mandatory public schools. Communism is a way to get compulsion, to get people to be perfect, aka Satan's plan. Rockefeller said, 
I want to own nothing and control everything. Samuel L. Bloom, Blumenfeld, in Why the Schools Went Public, said, Educational statism is anti-republican in all its bearings and is well adapted to Prussia and other European despotisms, but not wanted here. The control over education then goes into all other aspects of society by government. Public schools replace the concept of God with the concept of the public good. John Dewey, humanist, um, al along with others of the skull and crossbones, promote that that is a society, promote that humans are social animals, not tied to morals or religion. Dewey wants to get rid of profits, capitalism, competition, property, religion. He says there is no God, no, and no room for fixed moral absolutes. Stalin invited Dewey to teach in the Soviet Union, and it was so ridiculous what he taught that he was fired and returned to America. Dewey taught chemistry without mention of protons, neutrons, atoms, etc., but merely had students bake cakes to experience chemical reactions. This is a similar trend, a similar trend of our current education. The reason government finances school is to move it from uh, local to political control. Anything to get it away from local citizen control. They decry school major problems without saying what those are and start seeking funding and followers. The PEA and the NEA keep saying that the more federal control there is over schools, the better they'll be. Like a one-size-fits-all. The government believes people can't handle their own affairs. Sources which say they want to have the children be owned by the public, not the parents. Cited in the text. Government becomes its own publicity for its ideas. The Clinton propo uh, proposed schools would have no review of the curriculum by the civilians. The No Child Left Behind program has, quote, open court, which means the teachers must follow a certain script and even ignore the questions of the students for that the federal police to enforce that in the classrooms. Oh, and federal police to enforce that in the classrooms. There's a book to read. It's called The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America by Iserbert. Iserbert. Chapter 5, Welfare. The government people will say they want to spend government money to help the poor, but they won't give any of their personal funds to help. Examples are shown in the text. The caring of the poor is not the duty of the government, but of the charity of the citizens. Grover Cleveland said, People give to the government, but not vice versa. It makes the populace become more mean when government is who is in charge of giving to the poor. It weakens the kindness, character, and brotherhood of the the people. Government is not supposed to cut checks to farmers who have had a bad crop, etc. Cleveland turned down such requests <clears throat> since the Constitution doesn't say anything about that. Government charity breeds selfishness and resentment of the taxpayer. The recipient of government funds learns to expect that whether he earned it or not. It's like the man who refuses to move out of his parents' house, thinking they owe him a living. Ezra Benson said, Compulsory charity is not good. Too many people think the government owes them something. They see welfare as a right, and not a charity. Government redistribution of wealth is robbery, robbery not charity. Shakespeare said, Charity is twice blessed. It blesses him that receives and him that gives. Alexander Tyler in Circle of Democracy, 1770, said, A democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves money from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promising the most money from the public treasury, with the result that a democracy always collapses over fiscal policy followed by a dictatorship. Close quote. 
This is what the New World Order people are setting up for us. Economics is defined as humans trying to satisfy unlimited wants through limited resources. Capitalism is a self-restraint to ultimately get our wants. It, it is using self-restraint to ultimately get our wants. Socialism, on the other hand, is getting some things now and prison later. It is living in denial. When we want free things, it hurts our children's future. There is no free lunch. Thomas Jefferson said, If we can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of caring for them, they will be happy. James Madison said, If Congress can employ money indefinitely for the general welfare and are the sole and supreme judges of the general welfare, they may take the care or religion or religion of religion into their own hands. They appoint teachers everywhere, educate the children, assume the provision of the poor. This subverts the very nature of the limited government established by the people of America. Samuel Adams <clears throat> said, The utopian schemes of leveling and a community of goods are as visionary and impracticable, impract, impracticable as those which vest all property in the crown. They are arbitrary, despotic, and in our government, unconstitutional. Ezra Taft Benson, in Conference Report 1968, said, No one has the authority to grant such powers as welfare programs, schemes for redistributing the wealth, and activities that coerce people into acting in accordance with a prescribed code of social planning. Once government steps over this clear line into the aggressive role of redistributing the wealth through taxation and providing so-called benefits for some of its citizens, it becomes a means for legalized plunder. Joseph F. Merrill in Church News, December 26, 1936, said, Ready-tongued and witty-minded ambitious politicians get nominated for office by stirring up the people with glowing promises of unearned favors and benefits to be secured at the expense of others than themselves. David O. McKay in Church News, March 14, 1953, said, We are placed on this earth to work, and the earth will give us a living. It is our duty to strive to till the earth, subdue matter, conquer the globe, take care to the flocks and herds. It is the government's duty to see that you are protected in it, and no other man has the right to deprive you of any of your privileges. But it is not the government's duty to support you. I shall raise my voice as long as God gives me sound or ability against all the communistic idea that the government will take care of us all, and, ev and that everything belongs to the government. It is wrong. No wonder in trying to perpetuate that idea that men become antichrist, because those teachings direct those teachings strike directly at the doctrines of the Savior. No government owes you a living. You get yourself by you get it yourself by your own acts, never by trespassing upon the rights of your neighbor, never by cheating him. You put a blemish upon your character the moment you do. Robert J. Ringer, in Restoring the American Dream, said when politicians give out more for less, that is exactly what the people will do. Less. The more money people receive for not working, the less they will work. Congress spent $112 million of taxpayers' money testing 8,500 low-income families, and they were given direct payments for 10 years. And the more these families received, the less they worked. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in his campaigning, said government welfare programs were unconstitutional, but when he got in, he ignored that and took the nation toward government welfare, which is socialism. The New Deal welfare programs are opposite of the Founding Fathers' teachings. It speaks of power to tax so long as you have general welfare of the United States government. The Founding Fathers said that government was not to feed, clothe, or house people. It has shown how the government welfare destroys the poor it was supposedly designed to help in the text. Chapter 6, All the News That's Fit to Print. This chapter is about media hiding truth. Upton Sinclair said it is difficult for them to see whose paycheck depends on them not seeing. Close quote. The major news groups are also controlled by the same international bankers. 
David Rockefeller speaks of major media groups' promises of discretion and how he would not have been able to accomplish what he has in the light of publicity. He also says, quote, the supernatural national sovereignty of an intellectual elite, the world bankers, is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries, close quote. The super-rich pay companies to not cover them in media. George Washington on foreign politics said, be neutral and help both sides to have peace. In World War I, we were not doing that. Bernays persuaded the United States to enter World War I from him telling us that the Huns had no morals and had to be destroyed. We fell for it. The New York Times called this guy the father of public relations. In his book Propaganda from 1928, he said there is an inner cabinet of government we know not of which rules us in politics and business and social conduct and ethical thinking dominated by only a few persons. He further spoke of persuading the public to do anything via media, famous actors and sports personalities, sympathy for causes, and even the president. His book shows that over the past 80 years, United States presidents come in by conspiracy. That was the, uh, from his book, Propaganda, by Bernays. Hitler had a technique that if you tell a big lie long and loud enough, it will convince most people to believe it. Like global warming, homosexuality, gun control, universal health care, the cap-and-trade bill, etc. Stock percentages of major media owned by Rockefeller. So, Rockefellers own the majority of stocks in major media corporations. This is shown in the text. A United States congressman shows that media is controlled by a few rich people. In the text, of course. The Rhodes Scholarships are to introduce people to the conspiracy. Bill Clinton was one who took well to it. That is the idea. It, it is the idea of the rule by the few. The Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberg Group were explained. The CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, Robert speaks of getting a one world government, either by con consent or conquest if necessary. Aldous Huxley speaks of the tactic of being silent about the truth. The Aquarian conspiracy is how the media is designed to promote drugs, free love, promiscuity, homosexuality, Satanism, witchcraft, divorce, violence, and all that will destroy society. The Orwellian prediction is use media to enslave people and create their values, tastes, and desires. Uh, the text shows how we tricked Saddam Hussein into thinking the United States would not attack if he did certain attacks, when in reality we would. Miss Glaspie is the one who did this. The United States sends troops to settle disputes of a UN, of the UN, the United Nations, which is an important step toward one government. They use polling as a tool to change public opinion. A survey of 33 calls about gun policy, three of them wanted less guns as a solution to violence. The reporter played those three and ignored the other 30. So this reporter played the extreme minority of uh, views as if it were the ma majority in order to promote her agenda, her anti-gun agenda. The New York Times has been on the side of the communists since World War II. Pope Paul VI speaks of thanking media for helping bring in the New World Order. 100 million TVs portray candidates in a certain way to brainwash. Chapter 7, American Foreign Policy. They discard food so they can keep agriculture and market prices high. One man was fined for giving excess to the poor rather than discarding of it. They call for famine helps, but they created the famine. They ban trade while giving aid which is inconsistent. 
food for these reasons seven times more expensive than it needs to be. Third world countries are not allowed to see the, to the first world countries and hence uh, need to continue to depend on the benefactors who ship them supplies. <coughs> Third world farmers cannot sell their food at good prices because of foreign aid being dumped on them. The best way to promote peace is to invite other nations to join with us and live under our constitution. Stay out of foreign entanglements, but do not aid victims of international wars. Oh, uh, excuse me. Stay out of foreign entanglements, but aid victims of international wars. Don't enforce democracy on others by the gun. Satan's way is to force. The founders inda- uh, endorsed commerce and social relations with other nations, but not alliances with them. Foreign defense policies like NATO and CEDO are bad for America, and they can easily get us fighting inappropriate battles as it is a requirement that when one member of the treaty is attacked that all others must help it. We become military slaves to them. In pre-mortality, everyone who is on this earth, we see that everyone who is on this earth chose agency. So our current foreign policies are making people hate us, because people like agency. Ron Paul speaks against foreign aid and how it makes nations entitled and is unconstitutional spending of tax dollars. Of course, all this, these quotation citations, these are all found in the book. Chapter 8, the buck stops here. Roosevelt says all political things are by design, not chance. Crassus, uh, um, Pompey, and Julius Caesar sought to turn the republic into an empire. Helaman 7, 4 through 5 gives example of nations controlled from behind the scenes. Wall Street Journal, uh, David Rockefeller, head of Council on Foreign Relations, being as powerful as the head of the state. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reports on how David Rockefeller, the head of the CFR, is as powerful as the head of the state. David Rockefeller told the head of the state of Russia named Khrushchev to reign and he did within 24 hours oh, to resign and Khrushchev obeyed and resigned within 24 hours of Rockefeller telling him to the Council on Foreign Relations is often called the establishment it is controlled by the round table which is another group discussed further in the book the presidency is run by the Council on Foreign Relations Franklin Delano Roosevelt's son-in-law reports that Franklin ideas were not his own, but were given him by the Council on Foreign Relations, One World Money Group. This was to get political power. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, and others gave into this power behind the scenes to get personal power. The 1932 FDR Democratic political platform was made to get him in, then was discarded once he, once he was in. His son-in-law says this. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's son-in-law goes on to say that 90% of people in the Council on Foreign Relations don't know who runs it and its plans, but are merely there for status. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt says Joseph Stalin framed um, him. Near his death, Woodrow Wilson also said he, Woodrow, ruined his country from working with money barons. Twelve out of fourteen of President Johnson's group uh, he went to for counsel were members of the Council on Foreign Relations members. Uh, Johnson didn't want to escalate the Vietnam War, but they urged him to. Some of these advisors were personally against this war, but advised it anyway for the CFRs. Top military officers say Vietnam could have lasted only a few months were it not for this stuff. CFR leaders chose to end Vietnam after over half a million troops were deployed there and blamed it all on Johnson. The CFR are the puppet masters of the presidents. This is like horror horror being used by Satan until Satan did not need him anymore. Woodrow Wilson speaks of the fear of major manufacturers, uh, the fear major manufacturers have of unseen organization, of the unseen organization which attacks those who speak against it. In Wilson's book, which is of his speeches, he admits America is controlled behind the scenes. 
The behind-the-scenes corporations used Wilson's desire for more government power to help the people secure the more power for themselves. Any increase in government power is increase in the power of the CFR and the bankers. The solution is take power from the federal government and return it to the states, like the Constitution says. Baron Edmund de Rothschild of France oversaw the creation of the CFR. Uh, he, uh, there are lists of people involved in the founding of the formation of the Fed and CFR. Major names in these and major groups involved internationally in their creation and how they interrelate. All this is presented in the book. House Brain Trust and Wise Men Group's roles in all of this is presented as well. House Partner of Wilson. Details on that presented. Wilson and House. <clears throat> uh, Wilson is a person. Wilson and, ha uh, and House is a person. Wilson and House have the same opinions. House wanted a one world government. House wanted the Constitution scrape, scrapped, saying it's outdated. House wanted Marxism and spirituality mixed. House was beside FDR as well. House helped make income tax amendments. House called the inquiry of 100 social engineers. And what they did, including creation of the CFR. Jerry Rubin Clark, an LDS General Authority, was part of the J.P. Morgan Company, and when he heard them speaking of making another world war to get a new world government, since the World War I failed to get them such, he reported this to Church President Heber J. Grant, and Grant told him to get out of that company immediately, which he did. Indeed, the United Nations was born via World War II, just as they had hoped to use the World War to get us into the new world government. Thus we see World War I and World War II were attempts to get a new world government behind the scenes. J. Reuben Clark saying World War I and World War II were mistakes. We were tricked into by appealing to our hearts. The Fed artificially pumping up the money supply in the 20s caused the Great Depression, and they used that to give themselves money. The, the Fed knew the market would crash and told certain people and planned to benefit therefrom accordingly. Details of how they created the Great Depression via stocks is presented in the book. Overall, it was taking money from the middle class and giving it to the rich. World wars were for the Fed to make money and to alter public opinion about foreign involvement, causing us to become world policemen and to get a world government. No more world wars came after the United Nations came into being, and World War III will be to utterly destroy America and Israel nations to get a world government. Joseph Smith and Joseph Fielding Smith uh, speak about nations uniting as a negative thing. In the book, FDR put a bar in Japan to maneuver them to attack us at Pearl Harbor. Generals left without information at Pearl Harbor attack from their higher up Ups left them defenseless. World War II brought the CFR power. The CFR gained power over the State Department, then Cabinet, then the very Presidential Office. The CFR has private meetings, which are forbidden from dispersing uh, or to the open public. To the open public. Uh, there's lists in the book of the many agencies, like the head of the CIA, head of the NSA, the National Security Association, Security of the Interior, Secretary of Education, all of which are members of the CFR. Some prominent individuals of the CFR are listed. Regardless of whether a Republican uh, or Democrat is the president, leading experts and advisors come from this circle aforementioned of the CFR. The CFR is mainly composed of billionaires, CEOs of multinational corporations, international bankers, media leaders, university presidents, and other popular figures. Basically all the popular figures, including senators and congressmen and Supreme Court judges, but no representation from the middle class, which is the majority of Americans. So it is ruled by the rich and powerful. 
The CFR has all types of people in it of race and political views, and they encourage radical extreme ideas. Then they say they are open to all ideas by having these people therein, and thus say what they produce is fair. The CFR is how the president sidesteps the Constitution, using the president behind the scenes for their private agenda. Reagan was not a member of the CFR, but Rockefeller supported his candidacy on the agreement that he would have George Bush, a conspirator, as his vice president and use CFR members in his cabinet. This is what Reagan did. See Gary Allen, who wrote None Dare Call It Conspiracy, which book President Ezra Taft Benson suggested we read in a general conference report. The country, uh, you have to see the film of that address because the actual text of it, uh, in the printed text of Ezra Benson's talk, where he suggested we read Nunder Cult Conspiracy by Gary Allen, he hadn't planned on saying that. It was just something he said in the middle of the talk, spur of the moment. So it's not in the written, it's only in the video of the text, which you can find it. The country is run in large part, not just by the president, but his cabinet. Hence, all this is important about who his cabinet is, CFR, all this. All options based on their alleged reports, the cabinets give... Uh, the cabinet gives to Reagan, etc., are beneficial to the conspiracy. So, the cabinet of Reagan gave Reagan information about options for him to do, which all of their options they gave were beneficial to the conspiracy. The secrecy of the CFR meetings allows them to plot. Rockefeller uh, says the news has stayed out of their business for 40 years and that they could have not done it in the light of publicity and that such has enabled his plans for a world, one world government ruled by the elite international bankers claiming such to be better than the traditional way of the United States of America. The Miller Group put UN, United Nations, troops on USA soil to restore order This is what the Bilderberg Group wants. They want to put UN troops on USA soil to restore order and claim there are threats, whether real or false, to get Americans to go along with it. Then take the individual rights and put in a world war, one world uh, government. Largely from the internet, info of these secret meetings is beginning to come out despite the newspaper people's agreements to shut down any news about this that gets out. People are seeing the difference between promises of presidential candidates versus what they actually do as presidents. For example, Obama rebuked the Iraq and Afghanistan wars and said he would pull out troops, but rather he put more troops there. Also, he rebuked the $750 billion bailout which George W. Bush engineered through Congress, but then Obama did the same, but for trillions of dollars of bailouts. Obama also said he would make government more transparent but instead he made his meetings and that of Democratic leadership in Congress to be closed. Bush, Obama, and all presidents before them filled their cabinet with CFR members. The CFR, which again is the Council on Foreign Relations, message leaked out that they are purposefully denying Africans AIDS treatment. They call it natural selection and claim it is to stop the spread of the disease. They called for bacteriological warfare to get rid of non-white people once each generation. Lists books wherein you can read more about the the text lists books wherein you can read more about the CFR and what they do in their secret meetings. Some of the books are listed in the Shadows of Power about the CFR and American Decline by James Perloff. Another is a discourse called The CFR Conspiracy to Rule the World by Gary Allen. See American Opinion, 1969. It also suggests a Secretary of State to Harry Truman. Many other books throughout the text are referenced for good additional reading. Clinton, since a youth, wanted, uh, wanted by the small circle of elites controlling the world, the ones who control behind the scenes. Another professor is presented in the text who acknowledges the rule of the elite in secret hiding. Chapter 9. The Roundtable, the TLC, and the Bilderbergers. 
the roundtable groups are communist and want to be secretive. Rothschild funding groups. Uh, Rothschild is funding groups to become monopolies and control all heritable land. Founders of Roundtable and their roots and ideologies are listed in the book. The T Times newspaper has been totally controlled by this group since 1912. It also dominated such from uh, 1890 to 1912. A New York Times article states the plan of Rhodes, RT founder, to have a secret society which will collect the world wealth for its supposedly good purposes. RT is above the CFR. RT, which is Roundtable, also controls the RIIA. The CFR takes orders from the RIIA, and the RIIA takes its orders from the RT. The RIIA controls the USA and British government. RT vowed to get American back under British control after the Americans defeated the British in the Revolutionary War, and now they have succeeded. More on the Roundtable. Read the Anglo-American Establishment by Carol Quigley. TLC, founded by David, was founded by David Rockefeller. The TLC means Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission is to bring all economies into one world economy, or possibly three. They made or control the NAFTA and GATT. TLC formed uh, the Maastricht Treaty, which brought the European Union into being. TLC is even more exclusive than the CFR. How uh, Jimmy Carter became president is by the TLC. Bush, Clinton, and others are TLC members. The Trilateral Commission TLC, would have no orders to nations to help business flow, but this would insist on a one-world government with a supreme dictator ruling over such. A grand book on the TLC is... Uh, a three-volume book called Trilaterals Over Washington by Anthony C. Sutton and Patrick M. Wood. Bilderbergers are another conspiracy group who meet in hotels for three- to four-day conferences and send all hotel employees home for such and staff it with their own people and check everything for bugs and set up security checkpoint guard house uh, to, uh, to only let those with pre-issued ID cards inside. They meet annually. They control EU politics, which is European Union politics, including the government of Russia, and have some control over the USA. Some of their members also belong to CFR and TLC, etc. These organizations reinforce each other. Their first meeting was in 1954. They kill who they want to. See the book Committee of 300 by Dr. Coleman B. Uh, they, oh, the Bilderberg Group also said the USA settling... The United Nations disputes is an important step in going toward a one-world government, and is almost accomplished. This was said when Bush was about to enter the Gulf War with Saddam Hussein. Bush had General Schwarzkopf lead an international army, the majority of which were Americans, against Iraq. Bush said that such was for getting a new world order. Elitists always try to get us to be more and more the policemen of the world. Conflicts are usually nurtured by conspiracy people who then get the USA to go in there and bring peace. Despite Republican and Democratic parties saying they don't like the idea of America being world policemen, they have us go into conflicts to bring peace anyway. Our presidents should look for uh, should look out for our welfare and not go around making other countries mad at us for our intervening. NATO says we can only. Uh, issue forces to foreign states for defense. But in Kosovo War, we did the opposite. It was an internal Yugoslavian affair that did not threaten other nations at all. The UN is hence the world army via the NATO, of which the USA is now a part. Now, NATO can attack anytime, anywhere, not just defensively. The global role of NATO, it not being only for defending West Europe, is a big step to surrendering national sovereignty. The U.S. President can commit troops for 60 days without the consent of Congress. Clinton ignored this and continued bombing 78 days without Congress approval. What's next? Congregation, 
Uh, the Constitution says it's Congress who has power to declare war, but now we have an imperial presidency who does it. Founders of the U.S. made this rule, which we no longer follow, to avoid being like the Roman Empire again. Usually republics die when they get into letting one man declare wars. Kosovo conflict was naked aggression by NATO under direction of Bilderbergers to acquire some land. Kosovo has the riches, uh, the richest mines in Europe. The true story of the Kosovo conflict is presented further in the book. The supposed negotiation with Kosovo was agree or get bombed. Details of the original agreements were not released until after the bombing began. The official document, which is on the internet now, reveals that NATO could go anywhere in Yugoslavia and not be punished for anything they do there. The twisted government f foisted on Kosovo is further enumerated in the book. NATO, set up as the sovereign controller of Kosovo, replacing their police, disarming the local police, and other ways to overpower laws the Kosovo people decide on. They had power to consort to censor their media also because um, they imposed an economy which required them to put things up for sale and hence Bilderberg Group bought the mines in the name of humanitarianism and now control that region. Bilderberg Group is superior to the CFR and TLC and RIIR, the which being Britain's CFR, and RT, Roundtable. They are like an apex of pyramidal power of secret combinations. Conspiratorial groups that work together are many. Some of the most prominent are think tanks like the Heritage Foundation, professional associations like the Institute for Pacific Relations, fraternal organizations like the Freemasons, universities with conspirators on their board of regents like Harvard and Yale, tax-exempt foundations like the Ford Foundation, religious organizations like the World Council of Churches, political organizations like the United Nations, military organizations like NATO, or arist aristocratic associations like the Black Nobility of Europe. Another quote of the TLC attempt truly is to on how the TLC's goal is truly to become a government higher than the rest. Chapter 10, Terrorism and 9-11. Isaiah 30:25 says, quote, The day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Close quote. The history of people taken over ancient Rome by false terrorism is told. It is the road to dictatorship. The Book of Mormon shows this also. This is the idea of how governments will impose terrorism for on their own nations to get dictator, dictatorial power. Jeb Bush, uh, one example of this is um, a rich man in Rome goes around um, lighting major properties on fire and he tells the property owner, uh, no, this person who's lighting things on fire is the chief of the, of the fire, uh, firemen he tells the people whose building is on fire, look, you sell this building to me at a very cheap price, I'll buy it from you, because it's not going to be worth anything, because it's falling to the ground. And if the person said, yes, I'll sell it to you for that very cheap price, he would have his fireman put out the fire. But if the person refused to sell it to him, he would, he would just let the building burn. And that's how he became the most uh, wealthy landowner and rose to dictatorial power. More details of this in the text. Jeb Bush, Dick Cheney, and other prominent people had a plan for an American world empire. The document, Rebuilding America's Defenses, written in September 2000 by PNAC, showed that they wanted to control the Gulf region, whether or not Saddam Hussein was in power. It speaks of the United States' desire to control parts of the world for its worldwide control system, a blueprint for world domination. At least 11 countries warned the United States of 9-11 attack before it happened. Names of four of the 9-11 hijackers were provided to the United States, but none of them were arrested. 9-11 leaders were not followed up on. 
One hijacker we consider the 20th was seeking to learn to steer large airliners and had radical Islam ties, but the FBI would not allow his computer plans of a 9-11 mission to be searched. Between September 2000 and June 2001, there were 67 occasions where our jets went up to examine off-course planes, but nothing happened with the 9-11 off-course planes. Former United States Federal Crimes Prosecutor said there was such substantial evidence given before the 9-11 attack to the CIA and the FBI that they cannot claim to assert a defense of incompetence. Why would the United States attack itself thus? To maintain its hegemony by forcing its way into a situation where they could excuse getting into the oil supplies. The United States was informed immediately of the hijackings and could have shot down all the hijacked planes which crashed into the towers in the Pentagon, but they did not act. Vice President Cheney, having, uh, despite having information about the hijacking beforehand, did not order them to be shot down until after they had crashed, and even that order was not passed on. Experts show that if it was not just planes and fires that, that it was not just planes and fires that caused the buildings to explode, but it was demolition, and Tower 7 was not even hit by a plane, but it fell too. Buildings closer than Tower 7 did not fall, so we cannot say it was from proximity that Building 7 fell. Jet fuel won't get hot enough to melt steel and cause a building to fall. So it wasn't just from a plane hitting it. Sulfur from thermite, which is a demolition product to speed the demolition process, was found in the remains of the buildings. See also... Journal of 911studies.com More evidence from report of a long-standing engineer professor of BYU that it was demolition and perhaps to get the United States in a war via international bankers. Evil tactics for attacking people rather than their arguments shown. Rudy Giuliani had an office in building 7 and was told to leave it before it collapsed but will not tell us who told him or why. Pancake collapse as why the the building seven will not hold up with engineers. The official report of 9-11 did not even mention building seven, a 47-story building which fell. The near freefall speed of the buildings had to be from demolition. WTC World Trade Center janitor heard two bombs go off beneath him in the basement of the World Trade Center before the plane hit it and was rescuing people from that all before the planes hit and he witnesses that the government denying that that it is that is a lie and a cover up he had been working there 20 years he tells his story in Latin countries but they won't let him tell it here in the United States of America the janitor heard other explosions as well 14 others agree and likewise testify with him who were there. A reporter reported the collapse of Building 7, but did so 20 minutes before it collapsed. Somehow accidentally getting this news from one who knew it would fall, and reading it too early on accident. See also 911truth.org, 911truthseekers.org, loosechange911.com, newamericancentury.org. Chapter 11, The Enlightened Ones, a.k.a. the Illuminati. Founder of the Illuminati is Adam Weishaupt, says that the end justifies the means. That sin is not sin if it is done with the intent of some supposed good or helpful idea. This Adam Weishaupt was deep into the occult. Illuminati means the Enlightened Ones. Adam Weishaupt considered... Uh, was considered by many to be the most profound conspirator. Rothschilds controlled the Illuminati by financing Adam Weishaupt. Masonic lodges are a headquarters for Illuminati. Rothschilds have instigated all wars. David Rockefeller is a partner with the Rothschilds. They have pharmaceutical companies. <clears throat> and a lawsuit was filed against them for creating the swine flu, then promoting a vaccine to such thus making billions of the vaccines. 
This is repeated with other diseases. They could be who caused the destructions before the second coming of Christ. Documents of the New York, uh, let's see, of the NYC drug ring creating and sending out swine flu. The drug ring controlled, was controlled by Rockefeller. These documents were sent to the FBI, but because the Rockefeller's hand in the government, we probably will not do anything with these documents. For the history of Adam Weishaupt is given in the text. Weishaupt knew many ancient languages and read texts, and was convinced the Great Pyramid of Giza was of initiation ceremonies. In 1771, he made his organization, then in 1776, changed its name to Illuminati. It copied rights of the Masons. It was found. It was funded by Rothschild to be able to put people into positions in which they could cause wars. The Illuminati was based on philosophies of Rousseau, Voltaire, Diderot, and others of the Paris Academy in the 18th century. The age of reason by these philosophers is actually a hatred of how Christianity had power over monarchies of Europe and was to destroy Christianity. They made a fraternity, well, a fraternity to destroy the church called Philosophes. Voltaire said that Christianity is the devil and said to lie boldly uh, always to promote the cause against these things. He wanted all morals from religions and monarchs to be destroyed. Illuminati founder Adam Weishaupt had an order established to convince people that it was a charitable organization, and when the people were going to move up higher in the organization, he told them that to do so, they would have to denounce all religion and monarchy, it being in the way of the happiness of humans. If they would not, they would not advance in, advance in the order. Once in the higher order, not the Illuminatus minor, but the Illuminatus major, the real purpose of the organization, to rule the world, was revealed to that person attaining the status. They were to do that by destroying all existing governments and religions. They would take on, they would take an oath, promising their every effort would be to that order, and their superiors in the order. They had a group of police called the Insinuating Brethren, which was the members looking at each other, and if caught one another trying to tell people of the order, they were killed. Its insignia was the all-seeing eye. Weishaupt was a Jesuit, so he brought much of that order there too. He deemed himself Rex, king, in the secret order. The texts of the order spoke of engendering hate toward races and sexes and religions. He wrote of what type of buildings they were to burn. He planned the attacks. The 20th century of violence seems to follow the instructions he wrote. In 1782, the Illuminati infiltrated the German Freemasons, which soon became all European Freemasons, by their alluring promises of sharing the secrets of the Illuminati the Illuminati had to offer. Also, I note, recall that American Freemasons are a separate group and were not taken over by the Illuminati until the late 19th century. Thus, some people worry about Joseph Smith's membership in the uh, Freemasons, but that was, and George Washington's membership in the Freemasons, that was before they were taken over by the European Freemasons and the Illuminati. The French Revolution of the 1700s started by the Illuminati was, or started by the Illuminati. Here, as in elsewhere, more explanation of how these things happened is given in the full text. This was by their men causing the Jacobian club houses, which had radical ideas. A mailman carrying Illuminati papers from Weishaupt was struck by lightning, and his papers discovered, so the police shut down many Masonic lodges known to be in the control of the Illuminati at the at that time of 1785. The Illuminati never ended, it just went underground with different names, same agendas. These subgroups have the same hand signs, etc., and refer themselves as Illuminati despite their different names. 
the unfinished pyramid with the all-seeing eye as the top stone was the seal. It had the words Anuit Corptus Vovus Ordo Seclorum, meaning announcing the conception of the new order of the ages. Then nine new rules for 1776 at the bottom. This is what is on the back of our United States $1 bill. We see the order is still alive and in control. The French Revolution came in the pretense of the aristocrats starving the, the others out. So rebels beheaded all the aristocrats they could. These rebels were Illuminati. Illuminati member Robespierre, who leaded the revolt, was killed, but had plans to kill 15 million Frenchmen, though only 300,000 were killed. After the failure of the French Revolution, they went into hiding, but did not die out. A partial list of the groups in which the Illuminati exists today are the German Union, the Tengenbund, Jacobian clubs whom executed the French Revolution, Sublime's Matrix Parfaits, which is translated as Sublime Perfect Masters, Société des Saisons, translated as the Society of Seasons, Leagues of the Just, whom commissioned Karl Marx and Frederick Engels to write the Communist Manifesto, then changed the name of the group to the Communist League, thus the Communist movement of the 20th century was from the Illuminati, also the Pol Polit Politburo of Russia still get together and have their handshakes and punishments, etc., of old like the Illuminati they replaced, they still want to destroy all religion and government, hence they celebrate May Day, which is May 1st of 1776, when the Illuminati was formed. The communists still think they will be able to rule the world with the new world order despite Glasnost and Perestroika. The Thule Society and the look at more of these organizations, which are Illuminati subgroups taking different names, the Thule Society and the Thule Society made the Skull and Crossbones group, originally a fraternity of Yale University, taken over by Thule Society, and those who believed easily their philosophies were given rank and Rhodes scholarships. President Bush was a member of Skull and Crossbones, and President, President Clinton was a Rhodes scholar. The Club of Rome who pushed for more governmental controls over the environment and thus over people, Fabian Socialism, and Anarchism. Also, the Executive Committee of the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR, is made up of Illuminati's, in that when joining the committee, they go to a small room in the UN, United Nations, building at an altar with the all-seeing eye they are given the handshakes, oaths, and rituals of the highest Rex Illuminati order. Hegelian dialect is about mixing thesis with antithesis to create synthesis. <coughs> there's the status quo as a thesis, and then there's what they uh, there's the opposite of that, which is the antithesis. Place those both, and you'll get a mix of the two, landing somewhere in the middle called synthesis. So what they're doing is putting out crazy ideas. The more you put out crazy ideas, the more and more they are accepted. In 1992, Gorbachev still will not admit that socialist theory failed or that communism is dead. He said, quote, an alternative between capitalism and communism is in the offing, close quote, which offing means the immediate future. This is directly lining up with Illuminati methods. Nesta Webster wrote a book based on what Weishaupt called the New World Order and a book by Nesta called World Revolution. It lists the six goals of the New World Order. One, abolition of monarchy and all ordered government. Two, abolition of private property. Three, abolition of inheritance. Four, abolition of patriotism. Five, abolition of the family, i.e. of marriage and all morality, and the institution of communal education system of children. 6. Abolition of Religion Hegel, a, scholar, a social philosopher that said war, said war is what is needed to mix views of people, 
and thus planned wars could mix views of people in a planned way. <laughs> Capitalism was the thesis, the current, so they proposed an antithesis being the opposite, which is communism, which is state-owned, state-planned, dictatorially run, atheist society. Opposite of capitalism, which was from Judeo-Christian values and a free market economy, is this communism. Now soon is coming the offing, in, coming, soon coming in the offing, or immediate future, according to Gorbachev, the antithesis of these ideas, which is the socially engineered synthesis of the thesis and antithesis, the two being opposite and meshing together to create a system called the New World Order, wherein the means of production and distribution are privately owned, but government dictates how much is produced and how many companies can produce the same product. And as far as as for religion, it is not Judeo-Christian or atheist, it is satanic. The nice in the middle ground, I guess. We see that this is what they wanted all along, and is why they went to communism for a time to get here to where the re the they really wanted to be all along Satanism. To understand the contrast between capitalists and communists, read Wall St read Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution by Anthony Sutton, and Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler by Anthony Sutton. These books also show that the American and European international bankers financed both the Bolshevik and Revolution and the Nazi movement. So we see that the thesis, a.k.a. the status quo of capitalism, and the antithesis, a.k.a. the opposite of the status quo, namely communism, were influenced by the Bolshevik Revolution and the Nazi movement, by the same puppeteer to get their desired outcome, the synthesis of a new world government. The New World Order people in the Nazi party financed Hitler to see if fascism was a feasible economic theory to use in their New World Order. This caused it to go from desolation from World War I into a super strong enough almost to take over the, the world against the might of the United States of America. The USA is who lead the world, and they had capitalism, hence the antithesis had to be opposite of the then most powerful nation, the USA. So they chose the antithesis of communism. For the creation of the synthesis, they needed a government to become the antithesis. They chose a place with similar land resources, size, and population of the United States of America, being Russia. The Illuminati funded Lenin and his revolt against the Tsars of Russia. The Western money and political power which the Illuminati pumped into Russia kept it from collapsing in communism for a while. Communism is a weak, is weak as a system and would have otherwise collapsed more quickly if they weren't artificially um, pumping into this uh, economy of communism in Russia. So after World War II, the Russians had planned conflict with the United States, hence the antithesis and the thesis con conflict and the breeding of the synthesis New World Order. There are leaders of the Western capitalists that are just as involved in this as the leaders of communism, all working together to mix the thesis with antithesis and create the synthesis New World Order. Recall the quotation from Gorbachev, clearly aforementioned, which clearly reveals this. Side note, I say this evil plot is so effective and so complex that none other than the devil himself must have created it and divulged it to his minions. Very impressive. Moving on. Detail of a Rothschild agent using $20 billion for the triumph of Bolshevism in Russia is presented in the text. This shows us that internationalists control communism. It is shown how communism was financed by capitalists for their for this agenda. This creating your own enemies was used in ancient Rome by persons to gain power, as aforementioned. In 9-11, a fake terrorist attack was to have excuse for the Patriot Act, which destroys the Fourth Amendment to the Bill of Rights, among other freedoms. Chapter 12, The Committee of 300. A financial advisor to the Rothschilds speaks of this group of 300 who chooses who will lead Europe and has all power over it. Six months later, he was assassinated for telling this. 
This committee of 300 coordinates the efforts of other conspiracies and is a clearinghouse for them. Some government heads call these people the magicians. Stalin called them the dark forces. President Eisenhower called them the military-industrial complex. They call themselves the Olympians. They consider themselves gods. In the group, there are the dictators and members of... Oh, in the group, there are the di the directors and members of the CFR, Council of Foreign Relations, TLC, and RT, which is the Trilateral Commission and Roundtable, and Illuminati and more conspiracy groups. Also on it are the aristocracy of Europe, the royal family of England. We see the Queen of England is not so powerless after all. These people once knew... Uh, these people once knew power, then seemed to give it up 150 years ago, but people who experience power do not like to give it up, and now acting behind the scenes, they are more powerful than ever. At the same time, the European and English aristocracies were being phased out of power is the time that the Committee of 300 came into power in the 1840s. No coincidence. A list of other conspiracy groups is presented, all intending to rule the world. These people fight each other and join multiple groups at times to try and climb the ladder, etc. But they will eventually kill each other and make the earth desolate in their attempts to beat each other to ultimate power. Some secret societies start out with good intentions, but Satan takes them over. Satan works in the dark and secret, and when you play in his backyard, he takes you over. A list is given of back of the background of other conspiracy groups aforementioned. Here is the list. The Council of Three. These are not mortals, like a satanic trinity in the book of Revelation speaks of. The Council of Nine. Perhaps the same as the Nine Unknown Men group. The Council of Thirteen, which is the Grand Druid Council of thirteen highest ranking witches in the world, whom take orders directly from the Rothschilds and no one else. The Council of Thirty-Three which is the top 33 Freemasons in the world. The Council of 300, which is what this chapter is on. The Council of 500, which is the 500 richest men in the world. The Black Nobility of Europe, which is the crown heads of Europe. The Theosophical Society, which is the founder under direction of Freemasonry, founded the New Age Movement. The Golden Dawn, which is witchcraft of the Rothschilds, where they do human sacrifice. The priority of Zion. These people are said to have the Holy Grail. Uh, head of organization of the Templars. The P2 Masonry, which is Italian Freemasonry group, taken over by the Illuminati and specializes in political assassinations. The Ordo Tempus, Templus Orientali. The OTO which is higher than Freemasons and specialize in every known sexual perversion. The Club of Rome, which is elites using scare tactics of environmental concerns and global warming as scare tactics to bring in the New World Order. See Al Gore promoting this in his film, An Unconvenient Truth. They are behind that, saying falsely that global warming is man-made. The Jesuits, which began in 1540, responsible for the Inquisition, grew, they grew into a society that took over the Catholic Church and runs it through the Black General, which is the label given to the head of the order. They have their own agenda for New World Order. According to Jesuit documents, the Catholic Church will head the New World Order, and the Jesuits run the Catholic Church, and hence the New World Order. The Kabbalah, this is a Jewish organization, members of the Sanhedrin were in the Kabbalah killed Jesus. The Committee of 300 believe they are absolutely charged by divine right to implement ten things. The ten are listed and described in the text. The 20 goals of the Committee of 300. Now, we will present them. One, one world government, the new world order with united church and monetary systems they direct. Two, Destroy national identity and pride, including the Constitution of the United States. Three, destroy religion, especially Christianity, except when they accept what they create. Four, mind control each human with technotronics. Five, stop industry except computers, 
Workers go to Mexico for slave labor. Unemployable people will get on drugs or executed. 6. Legalize drugs and pornography. 7. Depopulate large cities. A trial run was done in Cambodia. The Pol Pot regime. 8. Suppress scientific development except what benefits their agenda. 9. Use war and starvation and disease to kill 3 billion people. The quote, Global 2000 report, close quote, accepted by President Carter, calls for this. It calls for the USA population to be 100 million by year 2050. 10. Weaken moral fiber. Demoralize working class by creating massive unemployment. They turn to drugs and alcohol and rock music to rebel against the status quo and thus destroy the family unit. This plan by its authors find in, quote, the Aquarian Conspiracy, close. The, uh, Stanford professor Willis Harmon wrote it. Others involved, etc., are listed. Specific title given to look up the very report in the book. <laughs> report, quote, changing the images of man, close quote, by the Committee of 300 is what contains this conspiracy, aka the Aquarian conspiracy. They wanted to demoralize America with accepting drugs, free sex, violence, murder, homosexuality, pornography, abortion on demand, etc ultimate goal of being the destroying of the family. Single parent families are now more common than two parent families. The conspirators promoted the Beatles music group and other rock and roll drugs and free sex bands, a main theme of rock and roll bands. I say hence one of the brethren leading the church declared rock music is of the devil. They also encourage criminal misdemeanor activity. Fifteen million babies murdered at the time of this book being published, much more now. Goal 11 of the Committee of 300, create crisis and then solve them for people, thus quitting their ability to make decisions. Uh, goal 12, to create new cults and boost these already those already functioning, such as uh, the filthy Mick Jagger's Rolling Stones. Is the lead scene of Rolling Stones. And all the rock groups of the Beatles and those who follow them. Elder Gene R. Cook of the 70, in a talk in 1989 called The Eternal Nature of Law of Chastity, close quote, says that the Lord has music and so does the devil. What you listen to affects your chastity. Mick Jagger said to him on a plane, he was riding a plane and he was talking to the guy next to him and the guy said, I'm Mick Jagger and all this. Mick Jagger <laughs> told Elder Gene R. Cook, quote, our music is calculated to drive kids to sex. Well, it's not my fault that they do. It's up to them. I'm just making a lot of money, close quote. The Jagger went on to say he was excited of the advent of music videos as they could now show the sex, not just talk about it. Jagger says he has children out of wedlock and is proud of it. And Jagger said that people can do whatever they want and take whatever they want. And there is no commandments and no God and that nothing really matters. Compare Alma chapter 30, verse 13 through 18 for an antichrist of this type. Mick Jagger said he believed in evolution and that he descended from a monkey and that children should do what they want despite their parents and that parents limit them and that he was glad the family was being destroyed as an entity. Then Mick Jagger said disparaging things about the Book of Mormon and the Mormons. Then Elder Cook told him that the Book of Mormon is not the lie, but that rather he, Mick Jagger, is the lie, and that if he does not turn his life around, he is going to hell, and that he would be a witness that he gave him the message at the judgment bar of God, and that he had at least given him the word. So we see that the current music industry is not by chance, but is designed by the Committee of 300. They are like the general authorities of the Church of the Devil. Goal 13 of the Committee of 300 is to spread religious cults like Muslim Brotherhood, Sikhs, Muslim Foundation, etc. Also, know that Ayatollah Khomeini was created by British intelligence, military intelligence 6, which is MI6. The values of Muslims are being preached by the United States and British governments. They are encouraged to migrate to the West, and their values are contrary to the United States Constitution. Their ideas are promoted in our schools. Goal 14 of the Committee of 300. Export religious liberation ideas to undermine all religion, especially Christianity. Goal 15. Cause total economic collapse on Earth and cause total political chaos. Goal 16. Control foreign and domestic United States policies. 
April 17, give full support to international things like UN, IMF, BIS, World Court, and phase out local institutions, slash bring them under the UN. Goal 18 is penetrate all governments, work within them to destroy their sovereignty. Goal 19, make worldwide terrorist apparatus to negotiate the terrorist agencies whenever such arise. Goal 20, control the United States education to destroy it totally. See the book The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America by Charlotte Thompson Isbert. Isbert. Social education in the United States is generated, is geared toward leading Americans to world government by socialists, controlled behavioral, and social scientists. This is a massive text and puts it all in order, this deliberate dumbing down of America book. The book shows how the social engineers say there are certain crises at crises and use radical methods because of such, but never really fix anything and make things up to get their agenda through. It speaks of how the United States education is now used to promote humanism, atheism, and stupidity. A description of what would happen in the Committee of 300 is success, if successful is given. It is a description of the New World Order. It will have non-elective hereditary oligarchy, like the Middle Ages, and will limit the human population by family, by limiting family size, disease, war, famine, until only one billion remain of people useful to the ruling class. They further show that the New World Order they want will have no middle class, only rulers and slaves, world courts with unified laws, one world police and military, no national boundaries, no private firearms. The rebels of the New World Order will be called outlaws, and anyone can kill them on sight. Only religion will, the only religion will be Luciferianism, with witchcraft taught in public school. No private schools, no Christianity, no republicanism, no sovereignty of the people. Severe penalty to mention radical... Oh, just, sorry. Severe penish, penalty to mention racial or national identity, a number printed on each person which brings up their, fi their files of all government agencies, the CIA, FBI, SSI, IRS, FEMA, all vastly expanded and easily accessed. Marriage will be outlawed. Children will be raised, raised by state wards as state property. Women will continue to be degraded by the women's liberation movement. Free sex will be mandatory. Self-abortion for after two children born to a woman or clinically forced abortion if refused such. More of what the One World Order will look like is presented if they have their way. This will include things like compulsory showing of pornography, heterosexual and homosexual, in all theaters, etc. Recreational drug use compulsory with all having a drug quota and drugs bought at, at one world government stores all over the world. Mind control drugs expanded and compulsory via the food and water without knowledge of the people. Drug bars set up where the slave middle slave class will spend all its time. People thus become controlled animals with no mind of their own. Economic system makes just enough food keep the slaves going in their mass labor camps and they're all taught they are totally dependent on the state for survival a world ruled by the committee of 300 whose decrees are be are all binding instant law boris Yel yeltsin of the committee says they'll try the system on russia as a trial run there will be courts of punishment no courts of justice industry and agriculture will only be in control of the 300 committee of 300 Compulsory euthanasia for the old and terminally ill, and the city size will be controlled. Four billion, quote, useless eaters will be eliminated by 2050 by war, organized epidemics, including rapid acting diseases and starvation. Energy and food for the non elite are kept at bare need level. World population will become one billion, and half of that will be Chinese and Japanese races, as they have been regimented for centuries to obey authority without question. Artificial food storage by the government to show people they rely on the state to survive. Private banks outlawed, and the only, only the Bank of International Settlements and the World Bank will be in operation. 
more of what it would be look like if they have their own way in the Committee of 300 with the New World Order is no wage disputes allowed and immediate execution to those who break the law and uniform pay scales chosen by the government. H.G. Wells speaks of how many will give their lives fight uh, to fight against the establishment of the New World Order, but he merely says that's all part of it. Arthur Schlesinger Jr. speaks of it only coming by blood. The New World Order can only come by blood. They use a term for the New World Order that is less frightening to people. They call it globalization. They still use the term New World Order in their private meetings. The Founding Fathers knew that a society has a collective conscience. Fifty years ago, we had one. Now we have lost that innocence. We lost our national identity and conscience. They further said that God can't punish a nation in the next life, as it has no soul, so he must punish them in this world, and he does so by destroying them. The Tavistock Institute is one agency used by the Committee of 300. Its founder was from the 300. They create brainwashing programs, like the Aquarian Conspiracy, as before mentioned. The Economic Committee of the North Atlantic Institute is another group by the 300. They are doing social reforms and want to rewrite the United States Constitution, socialistic and monarchical, like that of Denmark. The members of this institute are communists. The policy they seek to promote is zero-growth post-industrial policy to cut down industry in the United States by vast amounts of by vast amounts to not near what it what, what it was in 1969. Other groups run by the Committee of 300 are the Systems Development Corporation, who seeks a vast database of every United States citizen's medical, financial, criminal, and personal information. The Mount Perlin Society, the Hoover Institution, which is originally anti-communist think tank, which was taken over. The Heritage Foundation, which is a conservative think tank, also in their dominion. The Beatles song... I get by with a little help from my friends was referring to drugs. Drugs are controlled by the 300. Its organizations are, for instance, the Colombian family cartels and the American and Italian mafia, also the royal family of England via the Committee of 300, who have done most of the moving of drugs in the past 300 years. The Committee of 300 in drug trade began with the British East India Company, BEIC. The British arist aristocracy had majority of members in this committee and they learned selling opium would get people addicted to their product and capitalized on that. See the book, Conspirator's Hierarchy, the story of the Committee of 300. The British would not take the opium, but the Chinese, under such oppression from their leaders, did. They called this the, Chine the China Inland Mission. It passed itself off as a Christian mission. Uh, the first samples were always free to hook people. The British royal family sanctioned this giving and selling and teaching how to smoke opium to Chinese. The opium was brought to America, and a railroad built was built to carry it. The workers to build the railroad were the Chinese strung out on opium. Many Negroes in America were stronger and needed work, but the Chinese were imported to work on it so they could pass on the opium and get more people addicted. At that point, the Negroes were not using opium. The Boxer Rebellion, we are told, was the West defending legitimate ideals in the East, but such is a lie. It was China trying to get rid of the opium trade which the committee, via the Committee of 300, via the British Parliament, was forcing on them. The Chinese had outlawed opium from this big issue when they found it, what was going on. The Chinese started their attack by destroying large storages of opium and sank ships on which were trading such. The British used this as an excuse to stay, to start away and had people push opium even in the fighting. The Chinese lost the war and were forced to sign the ten the Tainston, the Tainston Treaty, which allowed the British full access without taxation, or regulation, or prohibition. When, then, when communists took over China in 1949 with Mao Zedong, and they became partners with the drug dealers, so it is today. When the, commun when the Committee of 300 hears of others pushing dope, they tell the Drug Enforcement Administration about it so they can get rid of the competition. They have spies everywhere. Read more about the British royal family and drugs in the Imperial Tra Drug Trade book. Chapter 13, The New World Order Religion. Quote is presented of how people admire liars and hate who try to tell them the truth. The Spirit gives light to all people, and that light is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and whosoever, whoever hearken to it come to God the Father.
So DNC 84, 45 through 47, Moroni 7, 16 through 17. So do your best with what you know, and you'll be saved. After the Amalekites and Amulites rejected the true gospel, they still built synagogues and attempted to worship God. So we see the desire for religion is universal. Satan tries to get people to worship in any way except the true way. His, he fills the vacuum of desire to worship when people reject the true God. Satan tries to sell many doctrines, hence there are so many churches. Ultimately, Satan wants people to worship him. See Moses 1.12, 18-22. Matthew 4, 8 through 10. Satan does not enter the Eden scene until God had given Adam commandments, which Satan could fight against. This is why we call him the adversary. He always fights against God and Christ. It's almost like the law of physics, for every action an equal but opposite reaction. There are things to act and things to be acted upon. 2 Nephi 2, 14. Intelligence is what acts. Matter is what acts is acted upon. These are the only two things that have always existed. See DNC 93, 29, and 33. Satan has no intelligence because he has no light and truth, which is the definition of intelligence. He, which means he has become a thing to be acted upon and not a thing to act. He cannot act to his own accord. He simply reacts in an, in an opposite direction to what God desires. Hence, he wants people to worship him. The Church of the Devil has dominion or control over all the earth. First Nephi 14, 10 through 11. President Benson and then signed November 1988. 1986 says secret combinations are seeking to overthrow the freedom of all lands and increasing their evil influence in America and the entire world. A church may be defined as an organization which adores a supreme being has defined tenets and beliefs and practices, prescribed rights or ordinances. Non-religious organizations, i.e. financial and political, may still count as a church under this definition. They use forms of atheism, which weaken religions, humanism, existentialism, relativism, the theory of evolution, materialism, etc. They particularly hate Christianity. It's standing against all they stand for. They have their own form of religion with ritual, etc., if the world were only good, no, Lucifer, no worship of Lucifer would exist. Truth is knowledge of things as they really are. You can see 93:24, and such is not always pleasant. Knowing truth is not always pretty, but it always empowers us to make good choices. The New World Order religion is Luciferianism. This is attested by David Spangler, director of the Planetary Initiative for the United Nations as it being an initiation into the New World Order, and the way to wholeness and liberation to both Lucifer and mankind. Spangler is in the New Age Movement, the founder of the New Age Movement, and uh, which is basically the New World Order, says Lucifer is the savior and the logos and civilization of all and everything good. See Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, The Secret Doctrine. Volume 2, 171, 225, 255. They say Adonai, which is of course the Hebrew word for Lord, which refers to Jehovah in the Old Testament, is the bad God, and Lucifer is the good one. Not all members of these organizations worship Lucifer. Many are deceived. It is the leaders of the organization who worship Lucifer. The CFR Council on Foreign Relations has its high-level people, only the executive committee, Take rights of initiation by promising to serve Lucifer. See the book Secret Societies slash New World Order by Milton William Cooper and the aforementioned reference of this text of this text about the CFR. Lucifer keeps his dominion of various organizations in secret. He knows that mankind is against him overall. We all rejected Lucifer in pre mortality. See Moses four one through four, Revelation twelve three, four seven through nine. Lucifer hates all mortals. For they are who rejected him in premortality. He especially hates those who promoted the plan of God. Other organizations which worship Lucifer in the top levels of their organization are the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, the Royal Institute for International Affairs, the Round Table Group, the Club of Rome, the Skull and Bones, the Thule Society, the World Council of Churches, the Illuminati, and others. Other groups which lead to Luciferianism are witchcraft and Satanism. Witchcraft 
uh, masses initiated into Luciferianism by telling this by this by telling them it is an old polysynthetic religion that worships the gods of nature. They are told that they can get in touch with spirit guides, which are really just evil spirits, that will seek that will speak to their minds and guide them to higher levels of consciousness. All this within witchcraft. Which is a conduit to Satanism and Luciferianism. These evil spirits help fulfill spells that are cast. So yes, they can really cast spells which really work. They deceptively say it is like Christian prayer. These spells are no match for God's power, whom is in charge of all, who keep covenants in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, are promised protection from Satan's power, no matter in what form. Witchcraft is the religion of the Illuminati. The Golden Dawn uh, Coven is the personal coven of the Rothschilds. Freemasonry get their signs and tokens, etc., from the Knights Templar of the Middle Ages, who received them from the Gnostic Christians, who claim to have preserved the secret teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection, of which most Christians have no record. I say this could be why people think LDS got some of their temple rites stolen from Masons, for the LDS is the restored teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see the Jesus teachings post resurrection. Uh, has these uh, more of um, temple rite ceremony things in them. Okay. They were infiltrated, the Freemasons, by the Illuminati. The high leaders in of this hide with the cloak of good works by the lower people who do not know what is going on high in the program. They worship Lucifer and plan evil new world order things for the government in the high levels. The book Morals and Dogma of the Ancient Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry by Albert Pike, was given to those who get to the 32nd degree of the program. Uh, in that book, on page 321, it praises Lucifer. On page 556-7, through seven, it says that the Prince of Darkness made Adam, and that demons forbade Adam to eat the forbidden fruit, and that demons made Eve. It says um, that, on page 567, that Satan created and controls the world. Albert Pike, a 33rd degree member letter speaking of using atheism to break down Christianity. Uh, we have a letter from Albert Pike, 33rd degree Mason, uh, where he speaks of using atheism to break down Christianity with violence, then replace them both with Luciferianism. Another Masonic quotation praising the power of Lucifer and his coming rule is seen in The Lost Keys of Freemasonry, page 48 by the illustrious Manly Palmer Hall, a 33rd degree mason. Another Masonic quotation praising Lucifer is from Brother Eliphas Levi, The Mysteries of Magic, page 428. It speaks of intellectual Lucifer being the Holy Spirit and controlling magnetism and being love and intelligence. Why were George Washington, Joseph Smith, etc. Freemasons? It was not infiltrated by the Illuminati at that time. George Washington himself warned his friends against the Illuminati in several of his letters. The explanation is given in the text more fully, but note that Albert Pike was elected to the position of the Sovereign Grand Commander of the Southern Supreme Council of Freemasonry. See Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, page 564. Pike was then contracted by the European Illuminati head Giuseppe Mazzini, whom made himself overseer of the Illuminati activities in the United States. See Kerman, um, Satan's Angels Exposed, and Ralph Epperson, The Unseen Hand. In September 20, 1870, Pike and Mazzini drafted a constitution that established an ultra-secret governing body of worldwide Freemasonry, joining European and American Freemasonry, etc., which centered, which, with main centers in Rome, Charleston, and Berlin. They put in that constitution a new super right for Freemasonry. See Edith Starr Miller, Occult Theocracy. The headquarters for American Freemasonry is at Deans, is at uh, District of Columbia. As we see from this text, the name of the Super Rite Order was the New Reformed Palladian Rite, or New Gnosticism. They taught that Lucifer is an all-powerful, is as powerful as Adonai. It is quote, it is Lucifer who worshipped who is worshipped within this rite of Freemasonry. Close uh, stated in 
and it's still rare occult theocracy. This is the pal this the Palladian rite is practiced at the centers aforementioned in Charlton, Berlin, and Rome, and Washington D.C. This they're the main centers. This is the only place they do this Palladian rite, which is a rite of covenant allegiance to Lucifer. Mazzini, in a letter to Pike, spoke of this highest rite, the Palladian rite of allegiance to Lucifer as being a tool to unite Freemasonry and maintain the people in the unknown direction of their group and to keep it in strictest secrecy. The Middle East has its form of Freemasonry called Ancient Arabic Order Nobles of the Mystic Shrine. The author believes they worship Lucifer at the top also. It was, it was adopted in America and is known as the Shriners. Similar oaths, punishments, tokens, etc. Were, are taken. William J. Florence brought it to America and he was initiated by an Arabian diplomat, the Arabic Ancient Arabic Order of Nobles of the Mystic Shrine, A Short History. Uh, uh, Rosicrucians, aka the Society of the Red Cross, are a secret society like the Masons, and they say their rites began with the Egyptians. They have similar signs, tokens, etc. as the Masons. They worship Ra, the Egyptian sun god, which is also the Egyptian name of Lucifer. Mackey, an encyclopedia of Freemasonry, says the Templars, many of whom were destroyed in the 1200s, joined with the Ros which means cross, and laid low for over 300 years. Then the uh, two later merged with Freemasonry. Hence, Masonry has orders or levels of the Rose Cross and the Templars. Other organizations with similar handshakes, to signs, tokens, etc., as the Masons are the Thule Society, the School and Crossbones, the Nine Unknown Men, the Club of Rome, Dem Demolay, and the Eastern Star. <coughs> Chapter 14, Maitreya, aka the Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4 says the Antichrist will act like God. All religions have a savior figure. For Christians, it's Jesus Christ to come in the sky. To Jews, it's the Messiah to be born at Bethlehem. To Muslims, it's Imam Mahdi. To Hindus, it's Krishna to come as a reincarnated being. To Buddhists, it's Maitreya come as a reincarnated being. February 1962, a child born in the Middle East. Some sources say his real name is Ramat Ahmad. He's a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. The Rothschilds bankrolled him. He is called Lord Maitreya. He is called the savior figure, all rolled into one for many of these religions. He's born Muslim, yet bears Buddhist savior title. He travels the world performing miracles in London and India. He says the New Age will be one, uh, a one-world government. Uh, he speaks of an oath with the Lord of the New Age, Lucifer. Uh, deep meditation to connect with your deeper self, deeper consciousness. This allows evil spirits to enter you. Maitreya appears and vanishes like magic and does healings between such. What will happen is when he makes these, he'll come to congregations, he'll appear magic out of nowhere, he will do some healings, and then poof, he'll be gone. So he's going around doing this stuff, obviously he's got power of the devil. It's said he can speak all languages, like Satan. He's a forerunner for Maitreya. Uh, the forerunner for Maitreya is Benjamin Krem. He testifies of Maitreya and says, this is the man. Maitreya met with George Bush Sr. and Gorbachev in 18, 1989. He has been to Bilderberg meetings and other New World Order meetings. He's deliberately kept out of the press for now. Upon his word, they'll have much press about him, like coming out all at once. Similar to major coverage Barack Obama got all of a sudden. Obama was on Time Magazine cover 17 times. M McCain, who ran against him, was only on it five, and one of those was with Obama. There will be a day called the Day of Declaration, where they'll have fireworks go off, and in mid-air, a stage coming down, and the powers of the devil will help him seem like he's coming down out of the sky, like Jesus will. There's a NASA secret project called Blue Beam, which is to help this spectacular cosmic display by inducing, scientifically inducing earthquakes in precise locations, bringing up buried artifacts, suggesting validity of Maitreya, he will appear on the Mount of Olives at a time of an earthquake to look like Jesus Christ. Uh, microwave stimulating hearing in mammals, 
transforming sound signal into electrical signals which are processed for microwave signals at different frequencies applied to auditory complex of the brain causing sounds in your head which you think are from outside thus people think nature is speaking to them in their heads in other words there's this technology they'll use with microwaves uh, which will cause the brain to think that there's a voice coming to you thus thoughts will be implanted to people's heads making them think they love matria this kind of brainwashing there are much evidences of this major appliances giving audio causing cause people everywhere to hear this embedded chips also cause this a wave of suicide and psychological disorders will result on this day the major will be known by the new unknown name by a new unknown name the Pope will tell his people to follow Maitreya as the Christ. Buddhists and Hindus also will. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, occultist, praises Satan and Maitreya, his right-hand man. She is the first woman to become a 32nd degree mason. Beware of witchcraft, which has loose for as its god, healing via crystal balls, applies uh, unto the twelve chakras in the body and the third eye each person has. Med med meditation to get evil spirit guides... Uh, spirit guides, which are evil. Okay, all that is witchcraft. The Rothschilds want to build in Bodh Gaya, India, a holy city to them, a statue of Buddha there called the Maitreya Buddha, dedicated to the Antichrist Maitreya. It's planned to be 500 feet tall, which is three times the size of the Statue of Liberty, built to, it want to, it built to stand for a thousand years pneumatic systems for movement to be put into it, and auditory systems in it. Many of these things fulfill Revelation 3, uh, Revelation 13, 14 through 15, which is, quote, and he deceiveth, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life under the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Close quote. The mark of the beast 666 is read in what the Pope wore on his cap. Vicarius Filidei, meaning the vicar, representative of God. The number values of this title come to 666. They don't use this title on the cap anymore, as it's shown to be this number. This to return being worn on the cap of the Antichrist when he comes out. The barcode also has 666 in it from the separator lines in a different code. See the book for this explanation. Not the actual number 666, but the number, the code lines, their lengths and everything, and their distance from each other that has no numbers associated with it. And the 666 is seen there. Chips are to be put in us instead of use of credit cards, which have this UPC barcode, which has that number, 666, ubiquitously. Also used to store much data on us, on our buying habits, this chip will do. See 1984 by George Orwell. Benjamin A. Rogue, with power over economy, says, with power over economy of people, you can get them, you can get most of them to think and write and behave as you want them to. Chapter 15, The Priesthood and the Constitution. John Taylor bes said, besides preaching the gospel, we have another mission to per um, perpetuation the free agency of man and maintenance of liberty, freedom, and rights of man. DNC 58.5-7 says, more or less than the Constitution cometh of evil. Ezra Benson said, use our influence to get honest wise men into public office. This is just as binding as other laws of God. We must take active interest in these matters. All members have responsibility to have liberty uphold, upheld so that the church can flourish in the future. Harold B. Lee said all members uh, should be actively involved in the political process. Gordon B. Hinckley said we desperately need moral men and women who stand on principle to be involved in the political process. You can see 58, 26-28 says do much good without being told to. Mr. Benson says people of the church think to wait for a church program for the Constitution fight. But perhaps the Lord won't set a program for that, for the Constitution, because it would cause division in the church, and God doesn't want this to happen yet, as the wheat and the tares are not fully ripe. 
Joseph Smith said the U.S. Constitution is a heavenly banner founded in the wisdom of God, and that it is true. As Ben said, the Constitution is sacred akin to Scripture. Some choicest spirits sent by God to defend it, and now more choice spirits, even you who read my words, to preserve it. George Albert Smith said the Constitution of the United States is just like the Ten Commandments. Keep it where the Lord started it. He says, quote, keep it where the Lord started it, close quote. Jerry Rubin Clark says the U.S. Constitution could be in the Doctrine and Covenants. DNC 101.80 says the U.S. Constitution is established by God. Uh, Brigham Young said the U.S. Constitution is not perfect, but the Almighty has never found a man in mortality that was capable at the first intimation, at the first impulse, to receive anything in a state of entire perfection. The They, the Founding Fathers, laid the foundation, and it was for after generations to rear the superstructure upon it. Mormon 8, 17 and 19 says, Don't condemn the things of God. If there are imperfections in them, it's because of man. Beware this to avoid hellfire. John Taylor says, Joseph Smith told us that the last people to rally around the Constitution and save it from the grasp of unrighteous men would be the elders of Israel. You see, it is sad that we are take, we take a long time to get involved. Ezra Benson said, The devil has concentrated, and to a large extent successfully, in neutralizing much of the priesthood. He has reduced them to sleeping giants. Close quote. Ezra Benson said, Forsake our political and other sins, and return to the fundamental Christianity and of constitutional government, or we will lose our liberties, our free institutions, and perhaps our exaltation. David O. McKay said, but if members of the Melchizedek priesthood allow the U.S. Constitution to be destroyed, they not only forfeit their rights to the priesthood, but to a place in the highest degree of glory as well. Ezra Benson said, The complacent in the stand for freedom will regret that. So stand up and be counted for liberty. It may help to save your nation. It can help to save your soul. The devil tells us to wait until we know more before doing anything, and that you're busier with important things more so than the Gentiles. Let the Gentiles take care of this. Uh, you want to be loved by everyone. So this battle, this freedom battle, is controversial. You might be accused of engaging in politics. Wait until everyone in the church agrees on what is to be done. It might hurt your business or family. The world is corrupt and heading toward destruction, so why try? These are all things the devil tells us. The war in heaven was controversial, and we are to be involved there. We are to be involved there, and so here. That is what the truth is. Ezra Benson said, Even if it's too late to save the country, the fight for liberty will still be counted unto us for righteousness, like prophets taught nations that word to be destroyed. Like the Book of Mormon, which says, We must, as priests and holders, warn people, or their sins be upon our heads. Life is to prove ourselves, and the final victory be for freedom. Will be for freedom. Abraham 3, 24-25. Ezra Benson said, Quote, There is no conspiracy theory in the Book of Mormon. It is a conspiracy fact. Along this line, I would highly recommend you to read a, to you, a new book entitled None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen. This is in the conference report April 6, 1972. It's called Civic Standards for the Faithful Saints. Him telling us to read this was not in the paper talk. It is something he chose to say while standing, so you won't see that line in the transcript of the talk, but look up the video of it, easy to find on YouTube, etc., and you'll hear and see him say it. Side note, I myself... Nate Richardson have watched this video and seen him say that. The groups SDS, NEA, NOW, Greenpeace, the Wilderness Society, the Black Panthers were all created to agitate us toward greater government control over education, race relations, the environment, etc. Other helpful books are The Politician by Robert Welsh, Breathe the Tide, Beneath the Tide by Ken Bowers, author of this book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, which is about the creation of the Federal Reserve, by Edward G. Edward Griffin, The Naked Capitalist by W. Cleland Skousen. There's also, I note, a new book out called The Naked Socialist by another Skousen, uh, Richard Skousen, I believe. The FDR, My Exploited Father-in-Law by Curtis Dahl, and Propaganda by Edward Bernays. Some Liberty books are The Making of America by W. Cleland Skousen, The Majesty of God's Law by W. Cleland Skousen, America's Christian History by Gary DeMar, Quotations on Liberty by this author, Ken Bowers, Restoring America's Dream by Roger Ringer, The Federalist Paper by Papers by James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay, The Five Thousand Year Leap by W. Clancy. Ezra Benson said, We honor our founding fathers. The First Presidency acknowledged that wisdom, when they gave us the guidance of a, 
a few years ago of supporting political candidates, quote, who are truly dedicated to the Constitution and the tradition of our founding fathers, close quote. Desert News, 11264, for this first presidency, quote. David O. McKay, Vote Your Convictions, Desert News, November 12, 1964, said, support, your, support candidates who are aware of dangers inherent in communism and who are truly dedicated to the Constitution and, tradition, and the tradition of our fathers and candidates who support preservation of both personal and property rights. Chapter 16, What Can I Do? DNC 3830 says, Prepare shall not fear. Howard W. Hunter says, quote, The Lord has power over his saints and will always prepare places of peace, defense, and safety for his people. Close quote. Family Proclamation says that hold those who tear down family will have the judgments of God on them. Von J. Featherstone says this is the disposition of, all, of the fullness of times, but it is also the disposition of the fullness of evil, and that membership in the church alone won't bring safety, and that insurance companies can't provide, promise you safety, and that the host of angels will guard all our temples, and that, quote, there will come a period of time when even the elect will lose hope if they do not come to temples. The world will be so filled with the evil that the righteous will only feel secure within these walls. They will long to bring their children here for safety's sake. He goes on to say, quote, Our garments, worn as instructed, will clothe us in a manner as protective as temple walls. Side note, that hints that angels will surround us protecting us as we wear our temple garments. See these, his words, hosts of angels guard all our temples. He goes on to say, in a day of, quote, in a day of desolating sickness, scorched earth, barren waste, sick, sickening plagues, disease, destruction, and death, we as a people will rest in the shade of trees. We will drink from the cooling fountains. We'll be as fair as the sun and clear as the moon. Our children will bow down at his knees, Jesus Christ, feet and worship him as the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. They will bathe his feet with their tears, and he will weep and bless them for having suffered through the greatest trials ever known to man. Close quote. Ezra Benson said, We are approaching the moment prophesied by Joseph Smith that this nation will be on the verge of crumbling of this... Uh, this people will be the staff upon which the nation shall lean, and they shall bear the Constitution away from the very verge of destruction. Ezra Benson said, The government owes you nothing. The church won't tell you how to defend the Constitution, but admonishes us to do it. Abraham Lincoln said, teach the Constitution in schools and seminaries. As R. Benson was saying all this, goes on to say, God sent choice spirits to make the Constitution, and now other choice spirits, you, to preserve it. Yes, we will see that he sent special spirits willing to give their blood to defend our freedoms. Joseph Smith said, God calls us to give our all and be willing to lay down our lives. For the faith necessary under the enjoyment of life and salvation never could be obtained without the sacrifice of all earthly things. It was through this sacrifice, this sacrifice, and only this, and this only, that God has ordained that man should enjoy eternal life. Close quote from Joseph Smith's Lectures on Faith. Before the gov uh, beware the government saying they'll save us from crisis, but needing to go against the Constitution to do it. Kennesaw, Georgia had a law requiring households to have at least one gun. Crime went down there vastly. Thomas Jefferson said the strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect themselves against tyranny and their government. Tyranny and their government. Senator Hubert J. Humphrey said having arms is how to prevent tyranny, and history shows tyranny is possible in any nation. The original American common law jury system is presented in the text. The second coming of Christ is to be shortly after year 2000. Revelation 5 through 10 shows Earth history of 7,000 years. Adam is uh, Adam to the birth of Christ is 4,000 years past. See chronology chart in the LDS Bible Dictionary page. Uh, yes. The DNC 7712 says, "In the beginning of the 7,000 years is the time for the quote the preparing of the way before the time of His coming." DNC 7713. The events of Revelation 9 destruction just before the second coming says, quote, they are to be accomplished after the opening of the seventh seal before the coming of Christ, close quote. Before the second coming of Christ, the gospel must be declared everywhere. Jesus Smith, Matthew 131, Moses 762, Revelation 1416, C133, 37, DNC 911, Alma 298, 1 Nephi 1412, congregations of saints all over earth, there will be congregations of earth all over earth before the second coming. Revelation 5, 9 through 10, people will become kings and priests, which means they'll get temple ordinances. 
Orson Hyde in the Journal of Discourses said had a vision about half of the people in the church who left instruction from its leaders for protection from the enemy uh, whom later were killed in a storm. They felt church leaders put too much strain on them, and that's why they left. Bruce R. McConkie in the Coming Tests and Trials of and Glory in Sign May 1980, page 71, said, Gannett and robbers fill the judgment seats in many nations. An evil power seeks to overthrow the freedom of nations and countries. Satan reigns in the hearts of men. It is the great day of his power. Amid this, there are revolutions and glory to the faithful. Revelations and glory to the faithful. The way ahead is dark and dreary and dreadful. There will yet be martyrs. The church in Carthage, oh, the doors in Carthage shall again enclose the innocent. We have not seen, we we have not been promised that the trails and evils of the world will entirely pass us by. Take the side of the church on all issues, both religious and political. Close from Conkey. The best way to uh, to start an acquisition of precious metals is to buy junk silver coins minted prior to 1965. After 1965, the silver content was gradually reduced, and now there's none. W. Cleon Skousen and many people report... Oh, had many people report to him visions of the future they had in the church. He compiled them and found these motifs running through most of them. Regular priesthood channels have members and their food storage taken to tent cities to live out the time of the major destructions upon the earth. They had to leave everything for this, and some stayed behind and mocked. Chapter 17. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But in Franklin said, Whoever will introduce into public affairs the principles of Christianity will change the face of the world. George Washington was seemingly invincible. There were four bullet holes in his coat. An Indian chief with immense skill shot at him 17 times and missed each time. Persons with orders to burn all American ports in 1746 were stopped on their way by a vast storm in the middle of a sunny day and a plague, which killed 2,000 and uh, made 4,000 deadly, deadly ill. Forty-one years before the restoration of the church, the Constitution came into being. Patrick Henry uh, said the United States uh, was not founded merely by religion, but by Christianity. John Quincy Adams said the United States was connected with indissoluble bond of the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. John Jay said in the United States we prefer Christians for our rulers. James Madison said in the United States government we govern ourselves by the Ten Commandments of God. George Washington in his farewell address said national morality can't prevail in exclusion of religious principle. Thomas Jefferson said Christianity is friend of government and it's the only that deals with the heart. The Supreme Court, uh, several Supreme Court rulings in favor of Christianity as ruling principles are shown in the text. William McGuffey, from the preface to McGuffey's Reader, which is how our kids used to learn how to read, said, Christian religion is the religion of the United States. On its doctrines are founded the peculiarities of our free institutions. His readers, teaching children to read, spoke of God and angels and helping mankind and keeping God's Sabbath and how God sees children in school and how humans are on earth to improve themselves lest they sin against their maker. Boy, it's not that way in our readers anymore. Uh... 1980 display of the Ten Commandments was outlawed in school. See America's Godly Heritage by David Barton. Liberty is an inalienable right that comes from God. As Robinson said, there is one simple test for constitutionality of a principle. Do I, as an individual, have the right to use force on my neighbor to accomplish this purpose? If I do, then I may delegate that power to my government to exercise it in my behalf. If I do not have that right, I may not delegate it. Uh, also, he says, compulsive benevolence, uh, the uh, from the government, i.e. forced taxes to redistribute the wealth, is not charity. Close quote. Daniel Webster said, There is nothing so powerful as truth, and often nothing so strange. Epilogue. The tea house of, tea house of the August Moon says, Pain makes man think, thinking makes man wise, and wisdom makes life endurable. President Grant called J. Reuben Clark, a Constitution scholar, to be an apostle so he could warn the saints of political dangers coming. When uh, J. Reuben Clark was first called as an apostle and he was getting asked all these doctrinal questions of the church, about church government and all these things, Reuben Clark goes to President Grant and he says, I don't know if I can do this. This is, uh, I really don't know all this stuff. I don't have as much experience as others. And President Grant says, oh, don't worry about that. I called you to teach the saints of the political dangers coming. J. Reuben Clark says, oh, I can do that. 
Also, President McKay had Elder Benson give Liberty Talks. For Elder Benson said, oh, yeah. He would ask, why don't you give more talks on, like, charity or, like, humility or something? Why are you always talking on Liberty? And he said, well, I, I've thought about doing that sometimes. But then President McKay approaches me and says, how about another one of those great old Liberty Talks? See the appendixes for more messages. This has been an audio recording of the my summary of the book Hiding in Plain Sight, Unmasking the Secret Combinations of the Last Days by Ken Bowers. So for a text version of this summary, see my blog, www.richardsonstudies.wordpress.com, uh, or you can email me, rrnmailbox at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.